Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a 5B in Mid Michigan. And zone 5B is a really nice place to be typically. Today we're awaiting some rain. Um, we haven't had any for a really long time. I know I keep saying that, but it's in the forecast again for later on today. So maybe just being outside will help bring it along. All right, so today we've got some fun tasks ahead of us. I am going to be pulling out these pansies from these pots because they are definitely sweltering in the heat of summer at this point. Um, so we're gonna pull those out and we're gonna place them with some beautiful perennials and annuals. Let me show you what we've got. So for our annuals today, we have these beautiful super tunias, and these are the ones that I actually have in some planters on the other side of the pool, so they'll go very nicely with that. These are the super tunia royal magenta petunia, and uh, they are absolutely beautiful. They have a really bright pink color to them, and I think it is a nice tropical color for by the pool. Now, the other type of plant that we're going to plant in here for contrast and as a spiller is this beautiful sweet potato vine. And this is called Sidekick Black Sweet Potato Vine. This is a new one to me. This one is by Monrovia. And I think these are absolutely gorgeous. However, we are going to have to come in and take out this tiny little plug because they will not grow well if we leave that on. So I just wanna give a tip to everyone out there to look for these when you plant things. Sometimes you have to dig around in the soil a bit, but it's well worth it because otherwise you might find that your annuals are not performing after you've planted them and be really disappointed in them and replace them and then get another plant with a similar problem. So I'm not real thrilled with the fact that nurseries are using these these days so much, but uh, the remedy to it is just to look for and make sure you remove it while you're planting. So I'll show you how to do that today. And then for the thriller, we're actually going to be pulling the Wygela out of here because um, it hasn't been doing super great and it's really, really small, so it's not doing much for me. I'm gonna pull it out. I am going to pot it up and I've got one in both sides. This is the wine in roses and I planted it last fall in this and overwintered it in the pot. I probably didn't like that too much. It might've been a little too wet. So we're gonna pot these up and we'll find a place for them in the landscape this fall after we grow them on a little bit more and kind of baby them. And then for the thriller, we're gonna actually use quite a large plant. So this is a limelight hydrangea. Um, when I was at Lowe's, I happened to find these in the clearance section. And you can see the reason why they were on clearance is just because they have some yellowing leaves on the inside. I think they probably didn't water them very well for some time. And so, um, yeah, but they're a healthy, healthy plant. And uh, I'm actually seeing buds setting up on them. I don't know, I can't see very many right now, but here's one. And so I know that these are going to even bloom this year. So we'll put these in pots and then we'll find a place for them, hopefully in the landscape this fall. I just couldn't pass it up. I think they're gonna be really beautiful in these pots. All right, let's get going. So I've got a couple empty pots that we're gonna to use today. I think these will be great for the Wygela and I've got some nice fresh potting soil for them and for in this container as needed. Um, I do have a little bit of creeping thyme in here. I'm gonna try to leave some of the little things that I have growing in the sides of this container because um, I might want them to spill over the edge as well or I might pull them out and plant them into the garden, but they're just kind of cuttings that I've been growing on. And as I pull out these beautiful pansies, they're quite robust and such, um, I'm just going to put them into a container because if I plant these in the shade, I may be able to continue to get some life out of them. I'm not sure if I'm going to replant them yet, but uh, if I dig them out nicely, I have the potential to reuse them if I would like to. A nice weed there. 
And the tag for the spilled wine Wajila. Boy, this pot really is dry, I tell you what. It's hard to keep up with watering these days, even if I water um, these every day or every other day. Some of this is definitely full of roots. So we're going to use some fresher potting mix. All right, that feels pretty good. We're gonna have to dig a really nice big hole for this hydrangea. And that feels like another root mass. It is humid out today, you guys. I hope that's a good sign that this really is gonna be rain coming today. We were supposed to get some already this morning, but none of it actually happened. <laughs> okay. So this limelight hydrangea will eventually get to be uh, six to eight feet tall and wide. So, I really do probably want to get it out into the landscape because it's quite large. However, it won't be uh, a dead end if I have to leave it in this pot over the winter because they are hardy down to zone three, you guys. And... I've overwintered many a hydrangea in my garden. Let me grab my soil scoop. Whenever I do projects like, like this um, and I get out my soil scoop, I always get lots of questions from people about where I got it. And I got it a long time ago at Walmart. But um, you can get them anywhere. You can get them there, you can get them at Amazon, any garden center. I'm not sure if Lowe's has them. I've never looked there. These are really nice deep pots. So they do have the capacity to hold on to plenty of water and moisture for these plants. But boy, do they take a lot of soil. All right, let's see how this looks. Yes, that is the level that I want. Now, I just wanna make sure I get it the right way. And I think that is the right way. I want kind of the back of it to be facing the fountain and the front of it to be facing out. And let's just take this tag off now. So these um, limelight hydrangeas have been around for a really long time. Again, this is an, a, a two gallon one. And they, like I said, grow six to eight feet tall and wide. 
and they grow in full sun. Uh, they are a paniculata hydrangea, which means that they bloom on new wood. So even if I had to cut them back, um, potentially we could still get some blooms on them this year. And limelight blooms start out a green color, like kind of a jade green type color, and then they turn pink in the fall and sometimes a little bit darker pink, almost burgundy. So they're really, really beautiful. And I'm actually going to trim up a few of the lower branches on this one so that we can really see the annuals as they spill over the edge. One of the nice things about the limelight hydrangea and any paniculata hydrangea is that they do tend to do pretty well with not having too much water. They're pretty drought tolerant. All of my paniculata hydrangeas that are in the ground definitely have been doing well despite the drought conditions that we've been having. Now, let me grab my secateurs. We'll kind of trim up the bottom of this and we'll get the annuals planted around it after that. So I actually want to turn this just a skosh. There we go. And we're gonna get right in here and just trim off some of these real small bottom branches. Just kind of lifting the skirt of this plant a tiny bit, again, so that we can see some of the beautiful blooms that we'll have on these petunias and the nice draping habit that we'll have on that sweet potato vine. I'm also just kind of coming through right now and pulling off some of the dead leaves so that it's nice and clean and pretty. And I think that's probably all we're gonna have to do today to this. I'm trying to decide if I want to take this bottom branch off right here and I'm thinking I might just do that. And this one here as well. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. I like the shape of that better. And it's funny when you see plants on the clearance rack, sometimes they don't look so good because they've got all these dead leaves on them. But as soon as you take the dead leaves off and give them some water, suddenly they look like a nice healthy plant again. And some of, some of the ones that are on here that are slightly yellow, I think I'm just gonna leave for now. I don't wanna to do too much, don't wanna stress this plant out. It still definitely is recovering from being dehydrated. But yeah, I think that looks really nice. Okay, now before we fill in the soil around here, we're actually going to, oops, I'm gonna cut off this one dead little, couple little dead branches that are in here. Sometimes from a different angle, you see a little bit more. Um, so now we're just gonna take and plant some of these gorgeous annuals in here. We'll start with the Supertunia. Again, this is the Royal Magenta Supertunia, and this one is six to 12 inches high and 12 to 24 inches wide. And it looks like the root ball on this one is good. I'm just checking down in the soil right now to see if there's anything that's in here that might be like one of those little plugs that I want to get out, but I am not seeing one. So I'm going to put that one right over here. I want to have these petunias kind of facing the pool and 
the house and then we'll put the sweet potato vines in between them. Now, again, we're just gonna take the sweet potato vine and let me give you a close up here and show you what I'm doing. So this, I'm just gonna reach in with my fingers and be pretty aggressive about, hopefully you can see this, about trying to get this thing off because it's just gonna strangle it. I'm actually gonna have to take my glove off to get at it. Here we go. Now they say that these will grow right through them. But again, I have not had good luck with that. And maybe that happens better in other climates. But that's pretty much what the paper looks like. And you just don't want that around your plants. It basically is strangling them. So we'll get one of those on this side. And this one also has the same papery thing on it. So let's get that one pulled out. In fact, who knows what this is? I don't know what that is, but that was potted in with it. Goodness gracious. I know there's been a labor shortage in a lot of industries, so Sometimes things don't get done quite as well right now. Just got to be on the lookout. All right, I think we got that one cleaned up now. The plants are going to be like, I'm free, I'm free. It definitely is getting a little bit late in the summer to be you know, making containers. And I found that when I went to the store, it was like a very small selection to choose from because it had been really picked over already. But I was really pleased to find these petunias that I've already planted in other parts of, or in other pots around the garden. So now we're just going to do some backfilling. And so this will provide a good four or five inches of fresh potting soil to surround these roots with. And this potting mix already has some fertilizer mixed in. So I'm not actually adding anything to it. You definitely can if you want to. Now we're just gonna come in with some water. Clean off the edges of the pot. And definitely when you're watering pots, you wanna make sure that you soak them really well and that you give them enough water so that you can see it coming out the bottom. And I'm gonna do that today, even though it's supposed to rain because you guys know we really haven't had much luck with actually getting rain, even when it says it's supposed to. So here we are in the shade garden. And I thought this would be the perfect place to tuck a couple of these pansies so they don't go to waste. 
and if they kind of get covered up by the hydrangea eventually, that's okay. Because essentially, if I didn't plant these, they would end up in the compost pile. And I'm gonna put one right here, and then we're gonna plant one on the other side of the fern as well. I kind of had these soaking a little bit because their roots were very, very dry. Very, very dry. to get as much life out of your annuals as you can, isn't it? Now the other place we're going to try to tuck some in is in this garden bed right here. We've got some gaps. So yeah, let's see if we can throw a couple in here as well. Is this good garden planning for design? No. Is this using what I have to its maximum capacity? Yes. And you know what? Every little space that we cover in the garden with greenery is another space that I don't have to worry about weeds coming up. But I actually think this is gonna be really pretty, you guys. Who doesn't love pansies? I think that looks beautiful. Maybe we could put some also right here in front here. We'll go with the lighter colored ones on this side. And this bed gets part, part sun, part shade. So it'll be just right for the pansies, hopefully even throughout the summer. Well, it will be fun to see if these make it all the way through summer to fall. Worst comes to worst, I end up just having to pull them out and put them in the compost pile like I was going to anyways. And all this took me was a couple extra minutes to come in and do. And I think they really look cute, don't you? All right, my microphone and my camera shut down because of the heat, so I wasn't able to film the second part of the urn planting that we did so we're going to come back over and take a look at it so i can show you the finished product but before we do i just want to take a look at what we have right here on this side so you can see we have that petunia in front of both of the junipers here and they look really really stunning so again looking across the pool at that color and then having it again in the urns is gonna be great. And it actually goes really well with the color on these lantana also. 
So really just kind of tying together some of the colors that are throughout the garden so that we have that continuity happening. And here they are. Now because they're watered, I just watered them and everything, they are a little bit bedraggled in terms of the petunias, but these are gonna perk right back up, you guys. They are going to be, I think, really, really beautiful addition to this part of the garden. The birds have been enjoying the fountain so much this gardening season, and they love to just kind of hang out in the shrubs around the fountain and wait their turn. So this is just gonna add another little resting spot for them with a little bit of shade. Since I don't have any trees, sometimes we have to use shrubs that are small trees to be able to provide a little bit of cover for the wildlife and a little bit of shade for them and for us as well. Well, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today in the garden and spending some time putting together these planters and having an opportunity to reuse some of the pansies. Again, it's a really nice way because in part shade or part sun, they can continue throughout the summer. They just can't take the brutal heat and sun all summer long. Well, thanks again for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this and we'll plan to see you next time.